I'm Dr. Devanna Fulton, Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs. Thank you for joining us in this virtual format. We recognize that COVID is still a threat and that the cold weather fosters the spread of it and other cold and flu variants. To mitigate our exposure and in an effort to keep everyone healthy, we present the spring 2023 opening session virtually. With all the tragedy the pandemic forced upon us, the option to use technology to continue operations is one benefit for which we can be grateful. Technology does not replace in-person engagement, but it does facilitate our ability to talk and learn and see one another synchronously when we are far apart. January 13th, 2023 is Black Excellence Day, a day we recognize, celebrate, and promote excellence in every aspect of Black life throughout human history. In the run-up to this date, the Norfolk State University Spartan Legion Band brought the excellence of NSU to the world at the 134th Rose Parade. Public scholar Cornell West proves that Western thought is built on the notion that, quote, prohibited the intelligibility and legitimacy of the idea of Black equality and beauty, culture, and intellectual capacity. In fact, the, to, to think such an idea was to be deemed irrational, barbaric, or mad. So the excellence that the Spartan Legion demonstrated not only enhanced NSU's reputation, it challenged and undermined the entire philosophical basis for Western civilization and white supremacy. That's how powerful our students are. Let's keep this fact in mind when we go about our work at Norfolk State University. Through excellent teaching, groundbreaking research, and meaningful service, we are not only transforming lives, we are transforming the world. That's the impact we have, which should be at the center of everyone's mission and objective here at NSU. That's why I'm honored to serve this university and our extraordinary president, Dr. Javon Adams Gaston, to work with our exceptionally accomplished members of the Board of Visitors, to work with colleagues who I respect professionally and personally, and faculty and staff dedicated to our students, our institutional mission and intellectual pursuit and ch changing the world. Today's virtual session will feature an address by our BOV Rector, Mr. Devon Henry, the State of the Union Address brought to you by President Javon Adams Gaston. The musical selections will feature the talents of the NSU community, Mr. Amir Hardy, a junior musical music media major, and Dr. Bianca Jackson, an assistant professor of music. Following those performances, Campus updates and other pertinent information will be delivered by the university vice presidents and other campus leaders. Because we realize everyone's mental health is a priority and an ongoing challenge, today's program includes a mindfulness moment led by Dr. Kathy Thomas, Associate Dean in the School of Education and Professor of Exercise Science. So at this time, I would like to introduce Mr. Devon Henry, who serves as the Rector of the Board of Visitors. He'll bring greetings on behalf of the board and immediately following Rector Henry, our president, Dr. Javon Adams Gaston, will give the State of the University Address. Thank you for your participation. Good morning, Spartans. And thank you so much, Dr. Fulton, for the introduction and the greetings that you provided. So greetings, everyone. I bring you greetings on behalf of the Board of Visitors, 
It is truly an honor to sit before you as director of this board. It's an amazing group of individuals who are truly invested in the success of Norfolk State University. There's so much going on, so many great things and so much momentum to build upon that starts right here with you all, the faculty and staff. And now if I could take my board of visitors hat off for just two seconds and just speak as an alum, I can personally attest to the, the impact that the faculty and staff at Norfolk State University has had on my life, not just as I matriculated through the university, but also in my later life um, past as an alum. There's been so much and so many folks that have impacted my life. And as a, on a personal note, um, when I was uh, a week away from graduation, my stepfather passed away. And I will never forget the amount, the outpouring of love and support from so many faculty, so many staff, my professors, everyone that was just wanting to reach out and make sure that not only myself, but my family was okay. Because as you can imagine, as a young um, uh, person that is anticipating graduating, to have something tragic like that happen, um, it can really be, um, uh, it can really take you off course. Uh, but the, but the, the family, the family at Norfolk State really rallied around me and my family and, and really made me feel like um, I was truly special and that I will never forget that moment in time. So I would also like to say that um, as you walk onto the campus of Norfolk State University, the first impression you receive is the amazing and jaw-dropping campus, right? It is beautifully kept and just, uh, and as from when I was there and, and some of you who were our alum, um, you can, you can, um, you can just see the progress and how, how the campus has just uh, grown and, and, and how it's well kept. But I would contend that it's not the, the faculty, the, the facilities, it's the faculty and staff that gives you the lasting impression. The campus is your first impression, but the lasting impression is the faculty and staff. So I would like to say, keep up the great work. You matter. You are doing an amazing job. You are shaping the lives and the beautiful minds that come before you every single day. Your work does not go unnoticed. So you keep doing what you're doing and we will continue to give you the praise. On that note, thank you so much. You guys have a great day and continue to behold the green and gold. Thank you so much, Rector Henry. I want to uh, really say to all of the individuals who are here with us today, how much we appreciate your commitment to this institution, the work that you do in order for us to be successful and how you always hold up Norfolk State University and the things that we're doing to move the institution. I also do wanna give an amazing shout out to you for the, the success that you've had with um, changing history in being able to dismantle the um, Confederate statues, not only in Richmond, but across the nation. And that really allows us to have a breath of relief that we no longer have those um, visible statues saying that the, the world that we know is not real, meaning that it is true that the Confederate Confederacy lost the war. And that is for a reason. And when we remove those, um, those relics of um, Confederacy and put them in their proper places in museums and other places that people may want to go, but not on main thoroughfare fairs, we really change the culture of the country. And thank you for being the one company that would do this and do it well. And it landed most recently on the front page of the Washington Post above the fold. So our alums, our rector, 
are doing great things to change, to support, and to um, enhance history. Thank you so very much. Happy New Year to all of you, and welcome to our Spring 2023 opening conference. I hope that each of you enjoyed some time to um, be with your loved ones and to rest and recover. You have worked so hard, each and every one of you, and I am so pleased with where we're going. Last year, we, uh, we achieved so much for the Spartan Nation, but we would not have done it without all of your hard work and dedication. We could not have accomplished the level of success that we've reached and our goals would not be met if not for the commitment of our Board of Visitors, our university's executive management team, our brilliant and dedicated faculty and staff, and the talented student body. Before I address what I believe is an important part of our transformational change for our university, let me begin by acknowledging a successful academic year to date for Norfolk State Spartans. This morning, I will highlight a few of the accomplishments that we have had this year, this uh, beginning of the academic year. And guess what? We still have another half to play. So we're gonna make more and more successes and create more and more opportunities for our students to have the success that they need. I always say that student success is really about having the faculty, the administrators, the staff be focused on what is most important, which is academics teaching, which is research, new knowledge, and which is service, community building. And as we do that, and we bring our students along in the work that we do, we are creating that student success that is so important and needed. One of our finest moments in our institution's history just occurred last week. Well, I guess it was really this week. And that was the historic performance by the Spartan Legion in the 134th Rose Parade in Pasadena, California to celebrate the new year on January 2nd, 2023. If you were there, you know that it was an incredible sight. The Spartan Legion Band was supported by thousands, cheered by tens of thousands, and seen by millions across the world. I am told by the um, Rose Parade that about 100 million people worldwide view the, the Rose Parade. So when our students went there with a performance that was no less than spectacular, um, I will tell you the feeling of pride, the feeling of joy, and the depth of my soul that really wanted to explode with uh, pride and joy as we watched our students who were led by Mr. William Bethea and Ms. Stephanie Stat Sanders and their staff march through the streets of Pasadena, wowing the crowds. If you haven't seen the performance, please go to our university social media sites. It is truly a treat and you do not want to miss this performance that was epic. I applaud our students, staff, and Spartan Nation for showing up and showing out for the world as an example of the excellence of Norfolk State University. It is an amazing opportunity when you begin to hear people who are not Norfolk State University members as the band goes by say, behold the green and gold. So it was such a joy and I really appreciate all the work that went into that. I always say that these things don't happen by themselves, that there were many, many people and parts of the organization that were in, uh, a part of making this happen. And the joy that I feel is that everyone feels not only is this their duty, but it is their honor to be able to participate 
to support to all the people in uh, student affairs who helped make this possible, all the people in academic affairs, all the people in advancement, and the list goes on and on. Thank you. Thank you for what you did, but particularly for the young people who were in that band, who I hear practicing late at night after practice has officially ended. I hear them uh, right at my house, practicing and practicing and knowing that practice makes perfection. And boy, oh boy, were our students perfect. I thank you all for making this happen. The state of the university, colleagues, is very strong. This is evident by the many successes that we've achieved together and allow me to name just a few. For the third year in a row, and we can all applaud ourselves because this doesn't happen unless we're all doing a great job. Norfolk State University has been ranked by US News and World Report as one of the top 20 HBCUs in the nation. That is a great accomplishment. And I am so proud of you for the work that you've done to ensure that people recognize Norfolk State University as one of the best of the best. Norfolk State University professors have successfully partnered with the University of Virginia on a $5 million grant and successfully secured $1.5, a $1.5 million grant from the National Science Foundation. That's just two of the many grants that you are out there achieving and making a difference, both in the research and the um, production of new knowledge. Thank you. Norfolk State University also received a sub award across two years from EVMS for the $1.5 million CARES grant to help address substance use issues among women who are pregnant and or parenting. And as a community, we know how important this is. So I want to thank the members of our uh, faculty who were able to secure these grants to make a difference in the world. Our students are also achieving. Norfolk State University swept the top three spots to win the 2022 Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, the MEAC Conference Men's Cross Country Championship. The Spartans won their third straight title and 15th overall title. Congratulations. Emmanuel Perez, who's from the class of 2021 here at Norfolk State University, was among those who received part of the Pharrell Williams Mighty Dream $2.5 million award. His company, Nova Security, received $50,000. The company builds anti-phishing tools within the Web3 space. Additionally, Perez and company will receive a three-month mentorship that will help provide strategic relationships, programming, and tools for company growth. Um, also, res creating resilient networks and founder well-being. And I thought this is really important that Pharrell's um, Great Ambition Program um, focuses also on the well being of those who are working and creating new opportunities, new entre entrepreneurs. Speaking of successes, our former Student Government Association NSU president and student representative to the Board of Visitors, and he is a current student, he's now a senior, Jalen Drury has been appointed to the Chev Student Advisory Committee, and he has been voted in as a co-chair. Go NSU, go Jalen. Recent NSU graduate and former HBCU White House HBCU fellow, McKinley Lowry, was selected in the current cohort for the prestigious Columbia University HBCU Fellow Program. Currently, NSU has two alums accepted into this prestigious program. In university collaboration, many of you will remember that at the L. Douglas Wilder Center, Governor Glenn Youngkin announced an additional initiative and funding to address 
the catastrophic learning loss through, tu through a tutoring partnership between the Urban Leagues of Hampton Roads and Greater Richmond and four historically black colleges and universities of which Norfolk State University is one. In philanthropy and fundraising, our board of visitor Bishop Brown and the Mount Church hosted the HBCU Sunday where Truist Bank made a $250,000 scholarship funding to NSU and a promise to hire HBCU graduates and to provide internships for, a, for our students. Bishop Brown also donated through the Mount Church $10,000 to, to NSU. It was a great Sunday for Norfolk State University and the other HBCUs present. Fort Smith native and Grammy Award winner, Missy Elliott was a true, true um, star at our fall 2022 commencement speaker. Our students loved her, the community loved her. She provided inspiring words to our graduates along with a check to the university and a promise to provide even more to the university. Those of you who had an opportunity to watch the Lifetime Christmas movie, Kirk Franklin's The Night Before Christmas on Lifetime, which premiered December 10th at 8 p.m., but showed many, many times over the season. We'll note that throughout the program, a sweatshirt, Norfolk State University sweatshirt, was featured by one of the stars of the program, the young star of the program. And um, it gave acknowledgement to Norfolk State University that you get nowhere else because um, this was a case where everybody was in a snowstorm. And so they wore the same outfit throughout the movie because it was one night and they one night and the next morning. And so Norfolk State University was featured there. And let me say that one of the things that happens here at this institution is we create, we, all of you create opportunities and those opportunities get enhanced and become other opportunities. Because this came because one of the individuals who was here when we had the Nate Parker Institute uh, Film Institute this past summer, which was the first time the Nate Parker Institute had been in an HBCU. One of the individuals was so taken by Norfolk State University that she was a producer on this project. And she, in short, she asked us to buy, for them to buy from us a Norfolk State University sweatshirt that would be worn throughout the film. And that's what happened. So thank you, all of you, for what you do to ensure that NSU is acknowledged, that it is known, and that it is excellent. As you can see, NSU is making an impact wherever we go, but we can't stop here. We have so much more to do, and I am so pleased with the things that we will do. Next slide, please. So here we are at a time where things are changing in the world. As an organization grows, it becomes necessary for us to assess ourselves for our strengths, our weaknesses, our opportunities, and our threat. Moreover, we must continue to achieve success. We must also know that we must implement strategies to achieve the, our recommendations for improvement. And that is to focus on our culture, recognizing and accepting that it is key to successful, uh, to having a successful organization. So when we think about these SWATs, this SWAT, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, one of the things we know that change is upon us and that we must change or perish. 
who we are at NSU and higher education and more broadly thinking about our world matters, how we show up in the world. So what we have to really continue to work on is how our organizational culture is one in which we are able to address the issues that are pertinent to higher education at this time. According to the Society for Human Resource Management, what is called SHRM, an organization's culture defines the proper way to behave within the organization. The culture consists of shared beliefs and values established by leaders and communicated and re reinforced through various methods, ultimately shaping employee perceptions, behaviors, and understanding. Additionally, there are two key points for culture change and the success of our organization. One, organizational culture sets the context for everything an enterprise does. And two, a strong culture is a common denominator among the most successful companies. Why is change necessary? Peter Drucker in 2006, uh, who's a management consultant, who said, co is, is um, credited with coining the phrase, culture eats strategy for breakfast. And what that really means is that great, a great strategy without a healthy culture will not succeed. And in fact, great cultures are about how employees behave in critical situations. Great culture is where you have the majority of employees who are able to one, deal with pressure, two, respond creatively and positively to challenges, three, treat each other and the clients, in this, in this case, our students, with respect and dignity. Each member of the organization must feel a true purpose in their work. And I know because I get to talk to so many of you that that is who you are at Norfolk State University, that the purpose that you fulfill is student success. And I am so pleased that you are committed in the ways that make a difference. And what we're doing is looking at each of you. What I am doing is looking at each of you and seeing the greatness that you have. I want your, to, your environment to be one where you can achieve your highest potential. And that requires honest assessment and transparent changes across the institution. So what is needed here? According to Sherm, there are 10 key components to successful organizational change, but I'm gonna only talk about a couple. One is to align culture with strategy and processes. And we talked about that a little bit before. Norfolk State University is an institution founded on the principle that everyone can achieve. So we wanna bring the entire institution forward as we move forward. Therefore, we must ensure that everything we do, each of us on a daily basis, provides each person with the opportunity to achieve. The second is to connect our culture and accountability because we know that culture without accountability is something that we simply say, and it sounds good. It's crucial that we hold ourselves accountable for achieving our desired goals. Accountability is about providing individuals with the tools needed to improve where needed, to support their excellence, and to ensure we have, each of us, all that we need to be great. And third, we meet, need to invest now, be bold, and lead. We can't afford to wait for change to come. We must affect change now. In today's society, we have many challenges ahead, but these challenges are not insurmountable. As a matter of fact, they are opportunities to create, to innovate, to impact, 
and to be bold and to lead. That's what we do here at the Norfolk State University. The world of higher education is changing. There's more online focus. Students are questioning the cost of education versus the benefits. Um, we're working with many families who are struggling and who are trying to decide what does this mean and what are the options. In order for us to be successful, resiliency is key. What factors helped us to be resilient, particularly we learned so much about ourselves and about our excellence and about our resiliency and about our leadership during COVID. Has the decision making allowed us to respond with speed and flexibility as we did with the crises now that we are beginning to come out of that crisis? We're not out of the COVID crisis, but we're beginning to come out of it. And do we know and have we assessed people and the key resources that they needed and utilized in order for us to be successful? I know who we are. I know what we can do. And I have nothing but full faith that we will continue to make progress. It is an it is inevitable that we will see change. One can either accept what comes or create what will be. At Norfolk State University, this is our opportunity to help shape a culture of high expectations, opportunity, accountability, and achievement. In order to do so, we have to be intentional in our steps. As many of you have seen me demonstrate over time, I will ask people just to cross their arms across their chest and then to reverse that. And there's always some hesitation and difficulty. And I use that as the example of change is never easy. The process of culture change is, is as important as change itself. So how do we achieve this change? Well, there are four steps that we're looking at and there are four steps that McCune came up with years ago. Education, that people have to understand why the change in culture is needed. We've done that with, we've begun to do that with our culture shaping program that we have done. Resources, people have to have resources. We're asking people to do new and different things. And I have to tell you, I am floored by how successful and how innovative you all are. Um, everything from the culture, culture change work that we've done to the faculty uh, committee that's looking at how do we support faculty and provide um, resource to them to either do their work or to go to um, conferences or to do new and innovative things. Um, to the transformation uh, transform, transformation committee for student success, to the LGBTQ community committee, to the champions of culture, the, the diversity and inclusion committee. We could go diversity, equity, and inclusion committee. We could go on and on. We have called upon you to be engaged, and you have done so at the highest level. And now we have to provide the resources that allow us to implement this excellence that you have come up with and more to come, more people to be engaged, more people to want to do what we have done to be successful. Then the third thing is motivation. Motivation needs to be incorporated in every step of the process, whether those contributions are current or in the future, the more you have everyone understand and reinforce their inner excellence, the more we will be successful. And then finally, governance. Just as education is always the first step, of course, governance is always the last. 
the smoothest and most successful change starts at the bottom and it works its way up. And so we are working to ensure that everyone is included across the board, including our students in the decision-making uh, committees that we establish. Colleagues, as we move forward in a culture of continued and sustained success at Norfolk State, as leaders, it is our goal that you have the resources that you need to be successful. We need to help one another become our very best selves. As you will recall, the culture shaping by Sendelaney and, and um, utilized here by the Hydric and Struggles Company started in 2022, 21, 2021 and 2022. And it started with reshaping our culture and the culture of the university through culture shape, shaping sessions created and led by the consultants at Hydrix and Struggle. Thank you for all of you who have already engaged in this. We will continue the work. We know that these sessions are part of a comprehensive pro process designed to enhance aspects of our culture to achieve better results. Hydrix and Struggles has customized the culture shaping process to meet the needs of Norfolk State University's uh, many members of our community, including our faculty, our administrators, our staff. Hydrix and Struggles understands that culture shaping takes more than a single event. The process can, creates long-term measurable change. And this requires follow-up and ongoing reinforcements that take many forms, including action planning and commitments that are occurred during the sessions, a leader's resource guide as a follow-up to the sessions, and exploration of how to engage our leaders, faculty, and staff in culture shaping process. Now, the one beautiful thing about this is we have many of our faculty who are already experts in this area. And so utilizing this uh, service, this support only extends the new knowledge that they have already created and are um, expert in giving to our institution. We will continue this process of helping to shape our institution into a culture of continued and sustained expectation of excellence, opportunity, accountability, and success. Colleagues, once again, I'd like to congratulate each of you for a successful 2022 and to look forward to our success in 2023. Without your hard work and our collective effort, we could not have achieved any of these great accomplishments for our phenomenal institution. Because of you, we are positioned to continue in our rise as the, one of the premier HBCUs in the nation and in the world. And at the end of the day, there is only one conclusion. Our university is better than it was a year ago, but it is better because of you, this collective body. Behold the green and gold. Thank you so much, President Adams Gaston. Um, to facilitate today's program, we requested recordings of NSU musical talents. I invite you to listen with me to the performances of Amir Hardy, who sings Make Them Hear You from Ragtime, followed by Dr. Bianca Jackson performing The Greatest Love of All.
It's just a very low video. I've got to turn up to a hundred. Is a Excuse us, we're having some technical difficulties. This worked beautifully yesterday, um, but we're going to try the other video because I think that um, that one, the sound is more optimal. So um, bear with us. I thank you for your patience. Teach them well and let them lead the way. Show them all the beauty they possess inside. Give them a sense of pride to make it easier. Let the children's laughter remind us how we used to be. Everybody searching for a people. People need someone to look up to. Never found anyone who fulfilled my needs. Along the place to And so I learned to depend on me. I decided long ago never to walk in anyone's shadow. If I fail, if I succeed, at least. Take 
Thank you so much. Um, we are very fortunate to be graced with talented students and faculty. And so I thank Mr. Hardy and Dr. Jackson for those beautiful and inspired performances. Um, we'll make sure that the video with uh, Mr. Hardy will be made available so that everyone can have an opportunity um, to, to really hear and, and see the creative um, talent uh, here at Norfolk State. Um, I, I just, again, wanna thank um, Dr. Jackson because when we reached out to her to um, ask for their contribution to this opening session. Um, she worked with her students and um, staff to produce these uh, recordings and uh, was just very gracious and, um, and committed to making sure that uh, we had great musical selections. So thank you again. Dr. Jackson. As Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs, it's my honor to bring the 2023 Academic Affairs Campus Updates. Next slide, please. Partnerships with institutions and organizations uh, that expand our educational and professional opportunities for NSU students and faculty continue to progress. Since the creation of the NSU Public Health Collaborative in the spring of 2021, faculty and staff across the campus have been working diligently to build a new joint school of public health with ODU and EVMS. Faculty and staff have devoted an enormous amount of time and energy to these initiatives, and the university has dedicated resources to enhancing and building scholarship and community engagement at NSU that will contribute to the proposed School of Public Health and other programs across the country. Most significantly, after conducting three searches, we finally appointed the founding dean, Dr. Li Wu Chen, will join the School of Public Health as the founding dean in March of this year from the Department of Health Sciences in the School of Health Professions at University of Missouri, Columbia. Dr. Chen brings more than 20 years of academic leadership experience in public health including serving as the department chair and the founding co-director of the Nebraska Public Health Practice-Based Research Network. Dr. Chen has an established record of, of scholarly work in health services and policy, rural health, um, health economics, and public health services and systems. And he's also secured grants and contracts totaling more than $10 million. Dr. Chen earned a PhD in health policy and administration from Pennsylvania State University, a master's of health services administration degree from the University of Michigan. The initial application submission or the IAS has been submitted to the Council on Education for Public Health, that's CEF, the uh, accrediting body for schools of public health. CEF's acceptance of the IAS starts a review clock for approval of the proposed School of Public Health. The self-study on which school accreditation will be based will include NSU's new Masters of Public Health program. The proposed MPH program is being reviewed by CHEV, and the goal is to matriculate the first student cohort in fall of 2023. NSU is conducting national searches for faculty and leadership to support this program. The Department of Nursing and Allied Health is in the process of hiring four full-time tenure track faculty for the MPH program, as well as the founding MPH program director. And we anticipate the program director and faculty will begin their tenure 
by July, 2023. The Center for Public Health Initiatives at NSU was created in February, 2022 to collaborate with faculty, staff and students at NSU and throughout the Hampton Roads region on public health research, education, practice and engagement. Notable achievements include providing leadership of the development of the School of Public Health Initiatives and NSU's MPH program, the center's uh, NSU Public Health Collaborative, a working group with more than 25 NSU faculty. We hosted the American Heart Association's first HBCU community conversation in October, 2022. And in September, the uh, center launched the NSU as the Eastern Virginia Area Health Education Center with a grant of $550,000 and as the Norfolk Portsmouth convener for the community health uh, workshops for a health a healthy Virginia program with a $120,000 grant. I'm the executive director of our Center for Public Health Initiatives, Dr. Felicia Mebin, is the PI of a sub-award from EVMS for $200,000 to support social work and nursing faculty and students. Dr. Mebin is also secretary of the board of directors for the Consortium of African-American Public Health Programs. And finally, the center has relaunched Health, Healing, and Hampton Roads with WNSB live on Sundays at 11.30 a.m. So as you can see, establishing the School of Public Health is quite complex, but is moving forward with collaboration and diligence of the NSU leadership, faculty, and staff. In the fall, we announced the partnership between NSU and the Raymond A. Mason School of Business at William & Mary with the uh, William & Mary's MBA program that offers nominated NSU School of Business candidates the opportunity to enter the Master of Accounting or Master of Science and Business Analytics programs with a streamlined application process. Financial support is guaranteed with scholarships totaling $7,500 for in-state students and $10,000 for out-of-state students per year. And there'll be opportunities for additional scholarships and or graduate assistantships for those students. To date, three NSU business students received admission to William & Mary's Graduate School in fall 2022. NSU's Office of Global Learning and, and International Programs, led by Mr. Torian Lee, who directs the office, has established a robust portfolio of programs to expand the university's impact and offer students and faculty greater global educational opportunities. The program includes international university partnerships, third-party provider study abroad programs, exchange programs, and NSU faculty-led study abroad programs. In November, we signed an MOU with the University of the West Indies Mona campus for faculty and student exchange, and plans for those exchanges will begin in February, 2023. In spring, 2023, one NSU student major in political science will study at the London South Bank University. In summer and fall 2023, our goal is to send at least 50 students abroad. Our recruitment efforts between now and the study abroad deadline of March 15th um, should yield this result. And this cohort, cohort of students from NSU led faculty programs and third party programs will return to NSU as the first group of study abroad ambassadors will help recruit an even larger cohort going forward. We intend to have a diversity of majors 
represented in study abroad so that we can begin our study abroad curriculum mapping project. This approach will enable the Office of Global Learning and International Programs to keep a running list of pre-approved programs and courses from each academic department for the benefit of future students. Norfolk State University's faculty continually produce important scholarship and research and are recognized for their expertise and value they bring to the profession. On the screen are just some of the publications and honors our faculty earned in fall 2022. But in the interest of time, I won't read the list, which is really only a small sample of our faculty activities. But I want to acknowledge the superb work of these scholar teachers. They're models for our students and faculty of how to do excellence. Like their model scholar teachers, NSU students are successfully meeting challenges and making an impact in higher education and business and industry. In November, Nina Collymore and five team members won the first place prize uh, and a cash prize of $15,000 in the 2022 Thurgood Marshall College Fund CBRE Corporate Real Estate Innovation Challenge. The prestigious uh, challenge is a two and a half day business pitch competition where students from top HBCUs such as Howard University and Jackson State, North Carolina A&T were selected to participate. Students were asked to tackle real world challenges in the commercial real estate industry and present their innovative solutions to a panel of experts. And so we're proud that Nina and her team represented NSU. In December, graduating uh, Bachelor of Social Work student, Jaquila Caustic presented the celebratory address at the December School of Social Work graduate celebration. She was a non-traditional student and mother who worked full-time while pursuing her degree, uh, which is a real uh, mark of her perseverance and success. The talent and creativity of NSU's fine arts students are unmistakable. Fine arts student Mackenzie Linder won the National Target HBCU Design Challenge. Her design will be printed on apparel and sold at over 700 Target stores nationwide. And fine arts student Jordan Jones was the 2022 DreamWorks HBCU Fellowship recipient. He's been selected to start an internship program with DreamWorks in 2023. These are just some examples of NSU student success. Yet without the dedicated faculty who teach and mentor students, we would not have these accomplishments. Their success is our success. And I congratulate all of our faculty for their continued devotion to NSU students. In addition to classroom teaching and research and scholarship production, NSU faculty lead, collaborate, and engage students in their respective fields. Dr. Sean Anderson led the NSU Swim Club to a first place victory during the HBCU Swim Meet at the HBCU Celebration Water Safety Festival in Atlanta, Georgia, on the campus of Morehouse College. This was the first swim meet for the newly formed NSU Swim Club. Dr. Carl Bonner joined PhD and MSE graduates to celebrate NSU interns, Jalen Rose Clark, Ashley Wil Wilson, Elias Anwar, and Sean Nesbitt, and their successful summer internships at the Lawrence Livermore National Lab Laboratory. Graduate student Walker Cherry and Dr. Rasha Morsi, graduate program coordinator and director of the Creative Gaming and Simulation Lab, won the Best Student Developed Serious Game Award, that is Pirates of the Sea++, plus plus, 
at the Serious Game Showcase and Challenge at the Inter-Service and Industry Training Simulation and Education Conference in Orlando, Florida in December. The IITSEC is the world's largest modeling simulation and training event. NSU's pilot undergraduate research and mentorship program funded with a grant from the Lumina Foundation recruited its inaugural cohort in the spring of 2022. Eight faculty members and eight honor students participated in research during the 2022 summer and fall sessions. The faculty mentors are Cynthia Nicholson, Sharif Amin, Shade Younger, Sharon Austin, Joseph De Silva, Leroy Salary, Austin Ash, and Derek Lenoy. The program will be recruiting the next cohort of faculty mentors and student partic participants this semester. So I encourage everyone, if you're looking to uh, work with a student on and have a student assist in your own research, to reach out to Dr. Andrea Neal um, to um, participate in this program. On August 18th, 2022, a group of 40 community college, college students participating in the NASA Community College Aerospace Scholars Program from all over the nation visited the MCAR research labs, including the nanotechnology labs, the clean room, and the cybersecurity facility. This program is funded by the Minority University Research Education Program at NASA Langley Research Center. The students were greeted by Dr. Michael Key, and the visit allowed the students to interact with NSU researchers and ask questions about summer research opportunities and transfer options. And it's a great opportunity to build and encourage our enrollment in, of transfer students. As you will recall, last year we began work on four crucial initiatives to improve and transform our university. We continue to make progress on them. And so very briefly, here are some updates. The academic advising expansion has been a great success. Pre-registration numbers for spring 2022 and fall 2022 exceeded previous years by nearly 10%, bolstering enrollment numbers. These increases are database evidence of the success of this approach. The Abora Group is assisting Norfolk State University leadership and understanding our current faculty workload and designing an equitable process so that implementation of the workload policy facilitates faculty productivity and appropriately impacts the, the financial condition of the university. After identifying lists of peer and aspirational peer institutions, the group analyzed workload models and presented that information to the faculty and solicited feedback which they'll incorporate in further analysis. The research compensation analysis initiative is moving forward to completion. Attain Partners, the consulting group assisting us with this project, completed assessments of our policy and procedures. They interviewed faculty, staff, and administrators to obtain a greater picture of our research compensation practices and made recommendations based on professional standards, state and federal guidelines, and NSU's operations. That policy recommendation um, is currently in the review process. And um, when completed and approved, then training will be provided to the community for transparency and expectation of implementation. The course scheduling optimization initiative continues to progress, working with our our Caro, the a crowd, sorry, the processes of discovery, review, and projected outcomes have been completed. We're now reviewing several technological tools 
like Horse Dog and Ad Astra to determine the most appropriate technology for NSU's institutional progress. And the next steps will be to identify that technological platform, develop an implementation program plan and train faculty and staff schedulers. Our general education curriculum reform initiative is on its targeted timeline. To date, several workshops have been conducted or planned to provide a roadmap for designing existing courses and developing new courses that will be germane to, to improving student learning success. While the key players in this process are the General Education Council members, in order to be more inclusive, the General Education Council membership was expanded to include more faculty, especially those who teach the general education courses, as well as staff who work directly with students outside the classrooms. We learned from recent experiences with the COVID pan pandemic about the need for course delivery and instruction to be nimble and equitable. Thus, the time is now for academic leaders and faculty to determine how effective teaching and instruction should look at NSU. In this respect, campus-wide consultations and engagement will enable us to harness input from various stakeholders to reform the NSU general education curriculum in order to be more transformative, empowering, and engaging for our students. The Faculty Recognition Awards Committee was formed to create a celebratory award that is distinguishable from the University Faculty Awards, which are outlined in the NSU Han Faculty Handbook. This committee is charged with defining the selection criteria, eligibility, procedures, rubrics, and presentation format. The NSU Faculty Awards Committee met regularly throughout the fall semester and developed exciting ideas to rec recognize the extraordinary contributions of faculty and staff in academic affairs. I want to express sincere gratitude for the time and intellectual energy of the committee chaired by Dr. Robert Perkins and cross-section of faculty and staff members, as well as the graduate student, Shayla Martinez, who assists with the logistical task. The committee has presented a proposal that President Adams Gaston and I are reviewing and will respond in the coming weeks. Academic Affairs has partnered with Parker Executive Search to conduct three executive leadership searches for the Dean of the College of Liberal Arts, the Vice Provost for Academic Effectiveness, and the Vice Provost for Research and Innovation. In addition to executive leadership, Academic Affairs is conducting over 40 tenure track faculty searches this year. We anticipate completing these searches successfully and look forward to welcoming the semifinalist candidates to campus this spring for the NSU community to meet and review. This is a major hiring initiative for NSU and has the opportunity to really make a great impact for change and growth of this university. To support our growing research profile and intention to become a high research activity R2 Carnegie designated institution, the Office of the Provost has developed two programs to encourage and support faculty research and scholarship and leadership development. Beginning summer 2023, tenure track faculty members will be able to apply for faculty development to support their scholarly research activities while simultaneously mentoring undergraduate and or graduate students. This summer support, unlike previous support from CTL, 
includes a requirement to include student support and activities. Faculty who apply are to be tenure track, be willing and able to mentor students and to be active participants in the scholarship and research process and present their findings during NSU's Faculty Research Symposium in fall 2023. The bulk of activity is during the summer. Further program details and applications will become available in February 2023. The Spartan Academic Excellence Leadership Institute is an educational leadership institute for those seeking educate, uh, executive leadership positions at the director level and above. The program is open to tenured faculty and faculty administrators. The goal of the Institute is to prepare interested and qualified academic affairs professionals with the exposure, training, and assessment to lead in higher education. During this 15-month program, participants will focus on developing skill sets in three areas, in the personal areas that will focus on identifying skill sets of inventory and inventory characteristics related to integrity, discernment, discretion, decision-making, communications and self goals and expectations, operational um, areas that focus on decision-making leadership style, balance, finance, planning and execution, and in the areas of uh, social areas that include networking, supports, creating horizontal and vertical teams, coaching, and mentorship. Participants will engage in a hybrid program with virtual and in-person components that will meet um, each month uh, or have a module over a one and two day period with the remainder of the program virtual, including readings and workshops, um, discussions. Participants must be willing to commit to full participation during the entire program and applications will be available in March, 2023 with the program kickoff the week uh, around May 15th. Um, what's important to know is that this program um, is really investing in our faculty and staff here already at Norfolk State. Being a participant in this program does not uh, mean that one will uh, be moved into a leadership position, but we're preparing our, uh, we're growing our own and also preparing our faculty and staff to contribute to the profession overall. And I want to thank Dr. Khadija Miller and Dr. Rhonda, Fer uh, Rhonda Ferguson, I'm sorry, Fitzgerald, for their collaboration and leadership of these programs. After serving at this great institution for two and a half years, I've become familiar with the institution um, pretty well. However, I realized that because of the pandemic and the general onslaught of work that we all are facing and face every day, we have not had as many opportunities for personal interactions and to get to know one another. And so to that end, in spring 2023, we'll launch the series of Coffee with the Provosts, which will allow faculty and staff and students time to engage me in an informal manner for greater interpersonal interaction. Let me say that this is not an opportunity just for complaints or concerns, for which we have processes for that, those. I consider this an opportunity to get to know each other on a one-to-one, -one, human to human basis. I believe we can grow when we share ourselves. So I look forward to learning more about you and your interests so that I can be a more effective leader and better serve you and we can better serve the university. An announcement with more details on how to schedule coffee with the provost will be coming soon. And finally, please save the date.
for RISE 23, the Research Innovation Symposium and Exhibition Graduate and Undergraduate Research Conference that's scheduled for Thursday, April 20th, 2023. The half-day conference is scheduled to be in-person on campus with virtual elements for our online and distance students. More details and deadlines are forthcoming. So please save the date as we'd like to have representation from all academic colleges and schools, departments, and majors. Those are the updates from Academic Affairs. Thank you. And please join me in welcoming Dr. Justin Moses, Vice President and Chief Strategist. Good morning all and happy new year. And I am pleased to be able to address you all. And while we're not meeting in person this year, I look forward to connecting with you all uh, in the very near future. I'm gonna go very quickly this morning so we can go on to the next slide. Okay, and just as a reminder, uh, the division is compromised, I'm sorry, comprised of the following areas, access and equal opportunity, enrollment management, human resources, institutional research, information technology, and information security. Uh, we can go on to the next slide. With regard to access and equal opportunity, the university is continuing to make strides in ensuring that we are an inclusive institution, accessible and equitable. Access and, equ and equity is a responsibility that we all hold. And one of the ways in doing so is to ensure that our policies are consistent and congruent with federal laws and that the university is aware of training uh, on these policies. Our current Title IX policy is currently undergoing some revisions. And once these revisions have been made, you all will be able to review and provide some commentary before it is ultimately finalized by the Board of Visitors. Now, these revisions will be informed by new Title IX regulations that have been authored by the Department of Education uh, in, in, in conjunction with the Office of Civil Rights and the Department of Justice. Now, we are also in the process of restructuring the Office of Institutional Equity. And we're doing this to ensure that we continue to promote best practices, and addressing any matters that may arise and providing appropriate education and training. As of now, Ms. Brianna Williams uh, will be also serving as a Title IX coordinator. And I just wanna thank her for her leadership over these last several months. She arrived in August uh, and she has just been doing a phenomenal job in making sure that we are doing all that we can uh, to ensure that we are an inclusive environment. Lastly, you all have been receiving some emails regarding Title IX training from Vector Solutions. Uh, this will be the last semester that we will be using Vector before we transfer the training over to Blackboard, which will make it a lot easier for us to not only track this information, but it's a lot more user friendly when we're using a system that's internal to the institution. Next slide. <clears throat> With regard to enrollment management, first, I just want to applaud the entire institution for the work that's being done to ensure that we maintain a healthy enrollment and promote student success and excellence. But I want to take this time to specifically applaud the Office of Enrollment Management under the leadership of Dr. Juan Alexander. Amid the COVID epidemic and where many universities have experienced a decline in enrollment, we have experienced growth. This fall, we experienced growth by 6%. And even for this upcoming spring semester, we are currently seeing a 7% increase in enrollment. These increases are a result of the work that is happening over in enrollment management, but also across the entire institution through multiple collaborative efforts. Uh, most notably with Academic Affairs, Student Success Center, Student Affairs, and our colleagues over in Finance Administration, but also various uh, efforts with athletics and the support of university advancement and communications. Next slide. Okay, human resources. I am pleased to announce that we have created a digital HR format, which will be launched this month. This digital format is focused primarily on the HR recruitment process. Now, with the new format comes great responsibility. For this form to be used properly and efficiently, the university must be trained. Now, the backend users in HR, finance administration, and in several other areas have been trained along with a select pilot group. But in the upcoming weeks, you will see an announcement regarding training for everyone. So, I urge everyone in all departments responsible for any personnel actions to participate in this training. And if the time does not work for you, then all you have to do is email the address provided, and that way you can find a different time to participate in this training. But it's imperative that you all take the training so that we can use this so that we are more efficient in our HR operations. 
I want to thank the entire HR team under the leadership of Dr. Karen Pruden uh, for their work, along with uh, Ms. Stacy Gaines, who oversees HR operations. Additionally, a special thanks to uh, the IT team that put together this digital format, specifically Dr. Valencia Ingram and Mr. Linwood Moses. The faculty handbook and the AP employee handbook are also being updated to ensure that they are congruent with each other. <clears throat> in the past, the language in the handbooks, while they were similar, was not always consistent. So we need to make sure that we ensure this congruency. And so both handbooks are being currently modified. And Dr. Pruden has been working with faculty member Dr. Keisha Kearns on this endeavor. Lastly, you will be receiving some information about the business partner model as we have hired some new staff members. So we are reassigning we the business partners to the appropriate area. So there will be an announcement about which business partner is assigned to each division or specific uh, department. Next slide. <clears throat> With information security, the university's technology and infrastructure and IT security posture continue to be improved and strengthened through the adoption of new policies, business continuity planning, and training. And under the leadership of Mr. James Stevens, uh, you know, multiple policies, I think five policies have been created or revised, and many others to follow in the upcoming semester. Now, while we are doing all that we can to ensure that our data and information is secure, the best way to ensure that our data is safe is through individual actions training and diligence. Universities and organizations across the country are being targeted by scammers every day. And even recently, NSU was a targeted one. But that said, you know, people were able to provide this information and we were able to address that matter. That said, make sure that you are being diligent and protecting your information. If you see anything that's suspicious, please report it to OIT or to Mr. James Stevens over in IT security. Uh, last fall, we rolled out the dual platform for our faculty and staff, and now we will be rolling this out to students as well. And in doing so, we will continue to strengthen our IT security posture. There will also be a number of informational sessions that will occur this semester, so I urge you all to attend, and campus announcements will be sent out about that. Next slide. <clears throat> Under the leadership of OIT, uh, we are continuing to promote the Spark Innovation Academy. Uh, and spring distribution for students uh, will be happening later on this month. And we are currently in the midst of planning for the fall 2023 distribution. Um, because we have such a high student enrollment this year, we have nearly depleted our supply. But if there are any staff and faculty needs for a device, we would do our best to accommodate that request. Uh, so just make sure that you go through your department head or division head just with regard to that particular request, and we'll do what we can to accommodate it. Now, as the university continues to progress and grow, many departments are acquiring new systems and innovative technologies. And this is a great thing, but that said, to ensure that these systems are properly imp implemented, um, and as you're planning to acquire a new system, be sure to include, include OIT early in the planning process. This will help to avoid any challenges when it comes to actually implementing or integrating the technology into our own internal systems. And lastly, over the next 18 months, uh, OIT will be endeavoring to fortify and strengthen our wireless and systems network. Um, and I want to thank Ms. Faye Monroe Davis and her entire team for her leadership and all that they have done in this past year with regard to IT. Uh, it's been tough, um, but we're continuing to improve our overall IT infrastructure. Next slide. <clears throat> and I uh, definitely want to say last and certainly not least, I'm sorry, uh, if y'all would go back to the uh, previous slide. Thank you. Um, institutional research. And I want to thank uh, Mr. Ephraim Bennett for all of his incredibly hard work and diligence, uh, which he does so with the highest degree of professionalism. Uh, he is an office of one, but I'm happy to say that he will be joined this spring by a new staff member. Uh, so we are very excited about the future of institutional research and the focus this upcoming year will be on using data and insights to plan, to strategize, to share information, and to manage data properly. Also, uh, institutional research has been collaborating with all departments, uh, most notably with Academic Affairs on the SAC COC fifth year intern report and on a number of grants. Those are all the updates I have at this time. It is my honor to introduce my colleague, Dr. Gerald Hunter, Vice President for Finance and Administration and Chief Financial Officer. Thank you all and have a great semester. Thank you, Dr. Moses, and uh, Happy New Year, and welcome back, everyone. I pray that you all have had a safe and enjoyable holiday season. Uh, my comments will be brief this morning. However, uh, I begin by commending our leader, President Adams Gaston, and my colleagues in the cabinet, and the, the faculty, the staff, 
and most importantly, our students, and having achieved a, a successful fall semester. I'm excited and look forward to continued success for the spring semester. In addition, I must share how proud it was to watch our Spartan Legion over the holiday. I received many calls from colleagues and friends about their magnificence. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> As always, I'd like to start out with the financial position of the institution. Uh, you'll notice that this is a report that runs through the first quarter of the fiscal year, ending September 30, 2022. Just for those of you who may forget, we are now in 23 in the fiscal year is FY23, uh, often noted as 22-23. Start with the first column, which has revenues posted at the top of the spreadsheet and expenses uh, at the bottom. And basically what you're doing is you're looking at the, the, the net between revenues and expenses. Uh, start with the authorized budget. Uh, that's what was passed by the board and that's $246 million. You gotta add three zeros on the end of these numbers. And then what you have is the actuals in the next column through September 30. Take a look at the bottom line in revenues. It was 183 million point eight. Uh, in revenue and 83.3 million in expenditures for a net difference of 100 million 527,000 some odd dollars. A, a lot of that has to do with the fact that we get our state appropriations uh, at the beginning of the year. And then, then over the course of the year, you spend that down. Um, the next column shows the percentage of budget collected at that point. So for example, as I just shared, uh, as of September 30, we had already received 116% of our uh, state appropriation, which is the first line, the 69.7 million. And one of the reasons why you, you might ask, why is that over 100%? Well, you know, we have additional allocations that we receive for compensation increases, fringe benefit increases, and other state uh, allocations that have been decisions that have been made beyond the original uh, state appropriated state state appropriated budget. Probably the most important column for me and for our financial team is the year in projection because we're always constantly monitoring that to help decide, you know what kind of what kind of expenditures uh, do we have the ability to make or, do we need to just kind of like almost with uh, driving a horse kind of pull the reins a little bit? So probably the most important numbers are on here is the year in projection where you got $279 million uh, in uh, revenues and $247 million projected in expendi expenditures for a $32 million favorable uh, year in projection. And what this tells you is that the state of the institution's finances are strong. And they're primarily strong because as Dr. Moses shared, you know, our enrollment is strong and our enrollment correlates to strong tuition revenue and also to strong auxiliary enterprise. Next. The next two charts, not gonna spend a lot of time on them. They're just uh, pictures that kind of support what I just shared with you. Probably the most significant thing to observe here is how much of our uh, revenue is state appropriations. You see that's about almost 50%. Next chart, please. And then this chart is just basically a snapshot of the expenditure categories that are used uh, to describe how we expend our funds over the course of the year. And it's important probably to note that the first four categories, instruction, research, public service, and academic support, you know, are primarily what we would consider uh, instruction related types of expenditures. And then there's the breakouts uh, for the other areas for student services 
institutional support, institutional support being much of your administration and your staff and some operating expenditures there. Ops and maintenance is primarily uh, facilities management. And then you've got student financial assistance. That's money we receive from the state to support our students. Sponsor programs, that's research. Okay, those are the research dollars we generate. Then all the auxiliary enterprises are all the revenues and expenditures, or on this side, expenditures that we take in for op operating res life, uh, operating uh, um, the uh, uh, food program, and several other areas, bookstore. So, okay, uh, next chart, please. And I'm winding down. Uh, just want to mention a couple of things. Uh, the uh, university uh, successfully was certified for the ARMIX uh, review. And that's basically where the Department of Accounts uh, ask each institution to take a look at their internal controls. And uh, the conclusion for us was no significant weaknesses. Next chart, please. Just wanted to mention very quickly that for the fall semester, we had a very successful launching of the SAIL program, Spartan All Incl Inclusive Learning. Basically, you know, students received all of their course materials uh, up front uh, versus the traditional approach of, you know, going to the bookstore and buying them themselves. Uh, the, the bottom line on it uh, was about $2 million uh, in total uh, sales. And of that, uh, the university generates about 220,000. So that this first year, the cost of the program actually is being covered uh, by the institution to give our students an opportunity to adjust to the change and how this approach will occur moving into the uh, future fiscal years. Uh, next chart, please. Just a quick listing of the top capital priorities that uh, have been shared uh, as part of our university six-year plan, but also that will be a part of the legislative uh, process that's coming up both in the legislative session, which will start next week, and going into the, this, this year is a short session, next year is a longer session. But of course, uh, you know, our, our leadership team uh, in supporting Dr. Dr. J will be advocating for these top uh, capital priorities, uh, leading with the Living Learning Center and Dining Facility, uh, of course, and then the Health Physical Education Center, Lab School Academy, those three are really uh, prominent uh, uh, priorities that we would like to move as uh, expeditiously as possible. Uh, next chart, please. Oh, I think that's it, thank you for allowing me this time. I hope I didn't run over, but I've got to mention one parting comment. Uh, you know, in your schedule, there is a faculty travel training scheduled for Wednesday, January 11th from 12 to 1.30 p.m. in NGE room 215. The reason I wanted to mention this is I know that we are working through some challenges as it relates to being able to uh, process travel in a, in a way that uh, meets uh, high levels of uh, customer service. And our objective is, is to spend some time with you, uh, educating you on the process, but also listening to some of your concerns so that we can uh, continue to improve that unit. But with that, uh, that's all I have. Again, I wish you all a, a, a happy new year. And it is now my privilege to introduce Dr. Leonard Brown, Vice President for Student Affairs. Leonard. Thank you very much, Dr. Hunter. Happy New Year to everyone. It's my pleasure to provide you the update from the Division of Student Affairs as we begin this spring 2023 semester. Uh, in the fall, I shared that our division had worked to develop a strategic planning process to really focus our time and energy around student success. Our ultimate goal really is to create a student experience that supports growth and learning, that is engaging and uh, vibrant, that provides a HBCU experience like no other 
and supports persistence and graduation. I'm pleased to announce that the planning process is complete. And this semester, we are going to move into the implementation phase. Our first plan, our plan is titled Rest, Reimagine, Rebuild. Next slide, please. Over the next week or so, we will be sending a copy of our plan to campus partners across the university, not only so that you're aware of how we plan to contribute to the larger mission of the university, um, but also so that we can find opportunities for collaboration and partnership in how we support our students. We have done and would continue to do work on becoming a better team in student affairs. Knowing that the more effective we are working together, the more effective we are going to be for our students. Part of the strategic planning process was developing divisional values. And I wanted to share those with you today, uh, really as our public commitment to these values. Next slide, please. So our inspirational values include a service that yields exceptional results, unity and achieving goals effectively and efficiently, honor in the service that we provide, cultivation and empowerment to lead effectively and achieve excellence, and being champions of an inclusive community where all are welcome. We are committed to the work that's required to meet these aspirations and we look forward to continuing that work in the coming semester. Next slide, please. The strategic themes from our plan include operational and process excellence, connection, career readiness, partnership and community, and satisfaction and retention. We look forward to working across the institution to implement, evaluate, and celebrate the progress that we will make on behalf of our students. I'd like to thank my senior associate vice president, Ms. Benicia Towson-Porter, and the Strategic Planning Committee in the division for their leadership throughout this entire process. Next slide, please. We have previously announced the implementation of Timely Care for Students, which offers 24-7 access to counseling resources for our students. Launched last semester, it continues to be an important supplemental mental health resource for our students. But it also provides great resources for faculty and staff who are interested in learning how to assist students who are seeking mental health resources. Now this resource is available to you for free 24 hours, seven days a week. And you can access those resources by calling 833-484-6359 and extension two. Now this number was listed in the campus announcement that we sent out and can be accessed there. Again, this is strictly information uh, that will help you as faculty and staff learn how to assist students seeking mental health resources. Next slide, please. I wanted to take uh, a minute just to uh, reiterate a campus announcement regarding COVID. Uh, the mitigation efforts to combat COVID, including vaccinations, really have moved us to a point where continued modification to our own campus mitigation efforts are warranted, specifically around masking. So effective immediately, masking on campus is optional to include in classrooms and offices, at events, on public transportation, and in medical settings. This practice is consistent with guidance from the Center for Disease Control, the Virginia Department of Health, and state laws and regulations. Despite this change, the NSU culture of care remains. We fully support individual choice to wear a mask in any setting on campus. And we ask that everyone please respect those who are wearing masks and may ask that you wear a mask when in their classroom or office so that they can fully protect themselves and or their loved ones against the COVID virus. In addition, we respect the individual choice of community members and visitors to our campus who choose not to wear a mask. As always, we will remain vigilant regarding COVID and communicate with the community as we continue to safeguard our community against COVID. 
Next slide, please. I also wanted to highlight an important office within the Division of Student Affairs. Mr. Cameron Dabney is our coordinator of student advocacy, uh, and he works to help students navigate the university and addressing concerns and resolving issues. So one of the priorities we have for this semester is to make sure more students know that student advocacy is a resource for them and to make sure that you as faculty and staff know that Mr. Dabney may be in contact with you in his role to assist students in utilizing the, existence policy, the existing policies, practices, and procedures to problem solve. Over the next few weeks, we'll be working across the university to ensure that we're directing students in the best and most, most productive way as we help them succeed in and out of the classroom. Next slide, please. So there are so many highlights from last semester in student affairs, but I wanted to share just a few. Um, I wanted to thank Mr. Wayne Ivey and his staff for their work in navigating the enrollment certification process to ensure our veterans and their families are taken care of, um, and that we are continually working to support our military and veteran, veterans and their families by joining the National Veterans Leadership Foundation. I also want to thank Dr. Danielle Williams and the Student Support Services staff for the tremendous job they did in helping us celebrate National First Generation College Student Week uh, last semester. Your work in highlighting our first generation students is critical, uh, and the week that you put together was just fantastic. I also wanted to congratulate Ms. Lori Carpenter for her Lifetime Achievement Award from VSU. Um, Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity. Uh, what a tremendous honor and well-deserved. I wanted to congratulate Dr. Fitzgerald for her leadership in uh, helping NSU be accepted into the National Association of Student Personnel Administrators Culture of Respect Collective, uh, which is intended to help us further sexual assault prevention on our campus. And last but not least, I want to congratulate student Zaria Sonia Bieta, who was selected as a National Association of Student Personnel Administrators Undergraduate Fellow. Congratulations to that great honor. Next slide, please. Lastly, I would like to welcome Kenya Boyd, Lori Hobson, Justin Ellis, Antonio Gibson, Star Asia Gibson, Dr. Lori Hobson, Alexis Martin, Paula Small, and Emmanuel Williams to the Division of Student Affairs. And also congratulate, uh, congratulate Latoya Edwards and Tyrion Smith for their promotions within the division. Next slide, please. As always, I wanna thank everyone for the work that you do for our students. I'm looking forward to the spring semester um, and looking forward to a positive uh, experience for all of our students. Next, I'd like to introduce Dr. Kathy Thomas, who will lead all of us through a mindfulness moment. Thank you, Dr. Brown. And happy new year and welcome back everybody. I was given about five minutes, which when you first are you doing mindfulness training, five minutes is about enough. Um, so I wanted to just kind of get you all find yourself in a comfortable position, whether it be in your chair at work as I'm in, whether you have the opportunity to sit on the floor or on some type of a pad or a sofa wherever you find yourself comfortable. Take a few minutes to kind of get yourself settled. Okay. Once you get settled, go ahead and close your eyes or if you're uncomfortable closing your eyes, just kind of keep your eyes nice and soft. You know, kind of let the eyelids drop down so that you're not wide eyed open. Once you get to that position, Take a nice deep breath in, nice and deep. Pay attention to how you feel when you bring it in. And let it out nice and slowly. Take another nice deep breath in. Let it out nice and slowly.
And one more time, a nice deep breath in. And let it out nice and slowly. And then continue to start breathing a little bit normally again. But as you're breathing and you continue to sit quietly and your eyes are closed or else soft, take a moment to focus on your breath. Notice how it, the cool air from the outside comes through your nostrils. Try and follow that breath down into your lungs, down into your abdomen as your abdomen expands. Then follow it back out as it goes back up into the lungs, back out through a nice warm as it passes through your nostrils on the way out. Again, as you inhale, notice that breath coming in nice and cool from the outside. Focus on this breath as you follow it to your abdomen. Then as you exhale, follow that breath as it passes through your nostrils, warm from all of the inside. And continue to breathe like this, focusing on your breath for another couple of minutes or so. Cool air as it comes into your nostrils, following down to your abdomen. Exhaling out. Let everything else kind of disappear. Just focus on that breath as you breathe in and out. Thoughts may come into your mind. It's the beginning of the semester, beginning of the new year, but keep that focus on that breath. Don't fight those thoughts. Let them come in, but don't let them stay. Keep focusing on that warmth of it going out of your body and the coolness coming into your body. Noticing that transformation of bringing the cool air in, then warming it on the inside and releasing it. Again, keep focusing on that breath, keep focusing on the nostrils. move the focus down a little bit, still on your breath, but let's focus in on what happens when it comes into your chest. Inhale and that chest expands. Exhale and how that chest collapses. How does that focus, how does that feel? How expansive can you get without physically changing your breath? Focusing on that chest, inhaling in the expansion, exhaling in the collapsion. Make sure that body's nice and relaxed. Now focus on down into the abdomen, something we try to not do. We try to avoid that abdomen coming out, but as you bring in your breath, not abnormally, not deep, just normally, notice how the abdomen changes. 
expands a little bit with an inhale. Collapses a little bit with the exhale. Just a natural wave. Follow that wave of your breath from your nostril all the way down to your abdomen. And then from your abdomen all the way back into your nostrils. Natural wave of life. Again, things may come into your mind. Don't fight them, but don't let them stay. Pay attention to that breath. Keeping your eyes closed, still paying attention to that breath. Start deepening your breath a little bit now. Making yourself aware of where you are again, but keeping those eyes closed or at least soft. Take a nice deep breath in. And slowly exhale it out. Again, another nice deep breath in. Slowly exhale it out. And one more time. Take that nice last deep breath in. And as you exhale it out, go ahead and slowly open your eyes. Bring yourself back into your room. So I think that was my five minutes that I got, but I do want to take a moment to make you all aware of some things on behalf of the uh, Health and Wellness Committee, um, chaired by Dr. Ernestine Duncan. And uh, membership includes Ms. Shaniqua Goodlow, Dr. Vanessa Jenkins, Dr. Ann Catherine Sullivan, Dr. Cynthia Burwell, Dr. Donna Wolf, and myself. I think I've got everybody. Oh, Dr. Um, Rhonda Fitzgerald. Um, be on the lookout. We are going to be putting out some wellness information on different classes, yoga classes, for example, um, Dr. Duncan's stress management classes. If there are any ideas that anybody would like for wellness through our committee, please feel free to share them with us. And um, if you felt uncomfortable, closing your eyes and breathing like this in the quiet, that's okay. Um, it's always good to feel uncomfortable and then work through that uncomfortableness. I remember laying for my first time in a mindfulness setting. And after three minutes, I was like, I can't do this. I got to get out of here. I got too much to do. <clears throat> Just take a few minutes. It doesn't mean you have to do it for 20, 30 minutes. This can be done if you're having a bad day. Just clear your mind. As you say in yoga and meditation, if you can control your mind, you can control, if you control your breath, excuse me, you can control your mind. So um, you all have heard it. I think I'm sure most of you have been made aware of that. But if you need some time, take a few minutes. It doesn't cost anything. Welcome back. Happy New Year. And thanks for listening. And I will turn it over to... My apologies, I don't remember who is next. <laughs> Good morning, colleagues. Uh, I'm Clifford Porter, your Vice President for University Advancement. Uh, and I'm here this morning to give an update from the Office of University Advancement. Uh, I'd like to start this morning, uh, first of all, by uh, wanting to thank the President and our Executive Cabinet for helping to create uh, this new environment that has fostered philanthropy here at Norfolk State. Uh, we have worked together uh, from the cabinet level uh, to our Board of Visitors, uh, 
particular our NSU Foundation Board and our Alumni Association, uh, to really start to uh, bring folks into the fold and really to invest in Norfolk State. And as I like to say, uh, today is a good day to invest in Norfolk State. And as you will hear uh, shortly, uh, things are, are looking uh, very well for us as it looks at our, our philanthropic giving towards the institution. Uh, also, I have to, uh, I'll be remiss if I did not stop to thank the advancement team, uh, our folks in major giving, uh, alumni in the annual fund office, uh, development services, uh, communication and marketing have all worked together this year to make a marked increase and in impact on what has happened here uh, at the university. So I'd like to thank my team, especially for embracing the vision and taking and running with it and doing a great job at uh, implementation. Uh, so with that, I want to give you just kind of an overview of uh, what has been accomplished over the last year. And so on our next slide, uh, I will give you just kind of a, a snapshot of where we are for our fundraising for 2022. So if you look at this chart, uh, this goes back to 2017, uh, you will notice that uh, we have a marked increase in uh, our fundraising over the last few years. Uh, in particular, for calendar year 2022, we finished at $11,299,819, uh, which is a pretty significant increase, increase over the last year. Uh, you will also notice that our numbers for overall donors are up and our alumni donors are up as well. Uh, I will say to you that we are actually still counting. We have received some mail and some additional donations, so these numbers are subject to increase uh, over the next few days. But you can see that we are on the march, we're moving in the right direction, and we're very, very excited. And I have to thank uh, each of you who contributed to the faculty and staff campaign and some of our other appeals this year. Uh, we could not have done it without you. And so we thank you uh, wholeheartedly for your support. Uh, on our next slide, uh, we want to uh, show you uh, some of our major and leadership gifts this year. Uh, the largest gift that we received uh, in calendar year 22 was from the Landmark Foundation, which was a $5 million commitment to Norfolk State University. Uh, that will support uh, student scholarships here at Norfolk State across the board, across all majors. And so we are very excited about uh, this particular gift uh, from the Landmark Foundation, and that uh, we expect to do some great things with this money to invest into our students. Uh, our, one of our new board members, Mr. Conrad Hall, just at the end of last year, I uh, gave $1 million to endow a position in our history department. He's very interested in uh, constitutional law and uh, U.S. history. And so we're going to be looking to fund a faculty position uh, from uh, this major donation. And as you can see down the list, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Jim Squires, $280,000, uh, points bet a quarter of a million dollars, uh, Gold Net Gaming, $100,000, and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, we have this is just a few of our major leadership gifts. There are several others that we've received, but we wanna just give you a snapshot of what has happened over the past year. Now, I will say to you that while these are significant gifts, those gifts of 10, 15, 25, $100 are just as significant. And so we thank you for your support in whatever way you have supported us financially to make sure that our students have what they need. Uh, next slide. Our university events uh, area this year has had some uh, amazing activities that they have helped to sponsor. Uh, in September of last year, uh, we had our freshman convocation where we welcomed nearly 1,500 freshmen to the campus. Uh, also, around that same time, uh, we hosted the Founders Day Breakfast, which our keynote speaker was Mr. Mark Lamont Hill, who's a noted uh, political strategist and uh, does a lot of commentary nationally. Uh, and so we were very excited about having him on our campus. Uh, next slide. We also have hosted in October, the Mighty Dream Connection Reception where we had uh, Mr. Pharrell Williams uh, on our campus again. Uh, Pharrell is becoming a friend of Norfolk State and uh, we had a very nice reception with students and members of our board and, and several uh, members of our faculty and staff. And so we uh, have hosted that event. Also, uh, on the next slide, uh, our governor was here uh, back in November. Uh, our Urban League and HBCU tutoring partnership was announced. And so we are starting to become 
a place for uh, dignitaries and celebrities alike. That the Norfolk State has is the place to be. And so as we go forward in the future, we think that we will see more of these type visitors on our campus. Next slide. Also in December, we hosted our Emerald Society induction ceremony. And there were 32 individuals who were inducted into this prestigious society. Uh, they, reckon they are individuals who lifetime giving to Norfolk State uh, total $50,000, between $50,000 and $99,999. And so this group uh, has shown a marked commitment to this institution during their lifetime. Uh, this is one of the largest groups that we have inducted into the Young Society at one time. And so we're looking to grow that group as we move forward. Uh, if you have contacts with individuals you think might fit into this category, or if you would like to become a part of it, uh, please reach out to us and we will uh, give you a path to show you how to join uh, this prestigious group. As we move forward into our capital campaign, uh, we're gonna be looking to have more folks to join the Emerald Society, also our Lima Beach and Brooks Society, which is our $100,000 donors. Uh, next slide. Our communications and marketing efforts uh, this past year have taken a marked increase. Uh, if you look at our uh, visits to our website, between October of last year, uh, we were at 146,000 visits to our website. Uh, our page views were 362,000, and uh, the top three pages visit, homepage, uh, apply online, and our academics, which means folks are looking at us uh, as an institution of choice for higher education. Also, when our social media presence has grown significantly, uh, we have our Spartan Legion drumline uh, which performed at Pharrell's Mighty Dream event, 66,980 people were reached by our social media impact. Engagements were 5,200, likes 845, and our shares were 256. Uh, you will also notice that over the past few days, we have had thousands of folks who have visited our YouTube pages to watch uh, our mighty Spartan Legion band and their performance out in Pasadena. So, as we grow, as our institution starts to become more prominent in the country and around the world, we will see that this presence will grow even more. Uh, one partnership that I'd like to mention uh, before we move on is our hosting of the 100th anniversary of the Hampton Roads Black Media Professional back in October. Uh, we have made a significant effort to reach out to our media contacts around Hampton Roads and nationally to make sure that we spread the Norfolk State message uh, far and wide. So on our next slide, you will also see if you go out to the Norfolk International Airport, that we have three major displays now in the airport. Uh, there's one digital over or uh, headed towards the baggage claim area. And at each of the concourses, uh, we have a major presence, a major billboard representing Norfolk State. Also, if you go down to uh, Norfolk Waterside, we have a, a billboard there as well. And there are several other digital sites around uh, the community that we have uh, placed. We wanna make sure that Norfolk State is Norfolk's university. And we don't just carry the name, but we wanna make sure that our presence is solidified. Uh, during our homecoming week, we took out full page ads in the New Journaling Guide, also in the uh, Norfolk other, our other our Norfolk newspapers. And also we're gonna be doing some commercials here very soon to make sure that we advertise in a proper way that we can push the Norfolk State brand. I will say to you that Norfolk State is on the move. Uh, when you hear fewer students say that uh, we had needed money and we couldn't find it, it's because we have more scholarships, we're on the move. When you see our uh, transforming uh, bus fleet, which now are rolling billboards in Norfolk State. I will need you to understand that we are on the move. When our band goes out to Pasadena and that effort, uh, while they did their part, I have to give a, a major shout out to uh, the folks here at Advancement and Finance Administration, Student Affairs, we work together. When we work together, Norfolk State is on the move. And so today I'm just excited that uh, we talk about university advancement, we can see that this institution is moving forward, it's getting stronger, it's getting greater each and every day. And so we wanna thank you for your support. 
Uh, anything that we can do to support our academic units, uh, we are here for you. Uh, each day we are looking for opportunities to help fund you to make sure that you can support uh, our students in the best way possible. And so speaking of support and having uh, some major things happening, uh, our athletic programs have done some amazing things in going to the NCAA. And so I want to introduce now uh, a member of the Fab Five of uh, Athletic Directors of MEAC, our illustrious AD, Ms. Melody Webb. No, thank you, Mr. Porter. I would like to welcome and wish all faculty, staff, and students a happy new year and wish you all 365 days of possibilities and success. I am Melody Webb, and I am delighted to serve as Director of Athletics, and I look forward to continuing to engage in strengthening campus partnerships. I'd like to take a moment and thank Dr. Jay and the Cabinet and every one of you this past year for helping making this transition and the student athlete's journey a successful one. I especially would like to thank Dr. Jay for her leadership and commitment to athletics. It is because of her leadership and executive cabinet collaboration that we will continue to excel in all facets of student athlete success. I would also like to thank my staff. We lost a key member of our group, Dr. Ivana Rich, who went on to become an athletic director at Edwards Water College, and we wish her much success on her new journey. But I believe we have a great addition to senior staff with Christina Ruffin, our new assistant AD for academics. Ms. Ruffin has been with the university and supported us in various roles over the last 11 years here at the university. We also added Nima Connor, our associate AD for student services, who comes from us from the University of Texas. And rounding out my senior team, we have Kristen Armour, the associate AD for internal operations, who has been with us roughly around four years now. So we are excited about the senior team and excited to lead you all and lead our student athletes in our new journey. This team and the extensions of these teams will continue to provide a holistic experience for our students and serve as ambassadors to demonstrate our commitment to leadership, excellence, achievement, and results. We are excited about what's ahead of us and we are looking forward to continuing that success we had this past year. As we transition, I would like to give you an overview and a brief recap of athletics. Our priorities to achieve our mission is to focus on five key themes. Academic excellence, which is our commitment to holistic student athlete development, measured by academic achievement and post-graduation success. Athletic excellence is our commitment to optimize the ability for student athletes to win and consistently compete for championships. Financial stability is our commitment to achieve long-term growth and financial sustainability by increasing revenue streams to support strategic goals and our objectives. And then stakeholder engagement. And that's, that's our commitment to work actively with NSU partners across the university, alumni, and Hampton Roads community through regular communication, outreach, and engagement. And then lastly, brand management. And that's our commitment to raise the prominence of the NSU athletic brand and deeper community impact by telling the NSU story and delivering an NSU experience. And just recently, this week, we just broke top 100 in the country in our social media and branding for Norfolk State University Athletics. So very excited for our team. I'd like to thank Alex and Ajay for all the work they've done to really make that happen. And part of that story is the success we have both academically and athletically. With the health and well-being of student athletes as our top priority, and despite the challenges we are ongoing with competing, we have much success. We had 11 out of 13 teams have over a 3.0 cumulative GPA. We had approximately 150 student athletes make AD honor roll this past fall. We also secured an NCAA grant to enhance the academic platform for our student athletes by incorporating programming to enhance their name, image, and likeness, the class check monitoring system, and real response to allow for anonymous reporting. We are constantly looking and identifying ways to ensure mental health and well being of student athletes stay at the forefront while they navigate classroom expectations and performance expectations. We had a great start to fall 22, 2022. We had two teams perform well in the MEAC championships. Our women's cross country were runner up in second place, while our men secured the 22 MEAC cross country championship. And this is three times in a row. So, like they say, they three peak. Um, they did an outstanding job, and I was so excited to see them pull together to bring at home another championship. Our coach, amongst other athletes, were also recognized for accolades and honors with our coach rounding out Coach of the Year. Cross Country kicked us off with our success as we moved on to basketball season. Both of our teams entered the top 25 mid-major poll at the same time thus far in non-conference play. That's the first time in HBCU history that we had both teams, women and men, in the poll at the same time. So we're doing great things nationally, and this is a huge key for Norfolk State. It shows that we are bigger than they say we are, and we can compete with anyone. There's nothing like being a Spartan. 
So I'm so excited about what the team is doing as we enter conference play that begins this Saturday. So please come out and support. Our schedule can be found online at nsuspartans.com as well as other social media outlets. The student athletes need your presence in the building. We must begin to celebrate the process. The road to the championship is a journey that can have unexpected turns that need your support to stay the course. So let's demonstrate our Spartan pride by making sure we go out there and support our student athletes. I'm excited about what we accomplished thus far, but I'm more excited about where we are headed. We will continue to seek opportunities to engage and focus will remain on the health and well-being of student athletes and the community. This year will also mark the first year HBCU will host the National Track and Field Championships. This is a great honor for Norfolk State University and we plan to represent our institution, the HBCU culture and the city well. We are continuing to do big things in athletics and with your continued support, we can do more. So thank you for allowing me to provide you a brief update of athletics. Again, I want to wish you a happy new year and I look forward to seeing you at our first conference basketball game again this upcoming Saturday. So please make sure you come out and support. Next up, I would like to introduce Dr. Tony Atwater, our faculty senate. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Webb, uh, for your fine report. And uh, let me just say to all of the colleagues, uh, uh, happy new year. Uh, it's my pleasure to speak with you on behalf you know, of the NSU faculty senate and uh, congratulate the faculty for all its excellent work in the fall semester and uh, wish you uh, best uh, greetings and best wishes for the spring semester, uh, which we now are entering in. It's an opportunity and a pleasure to uh, be able to provide this update on faculty senate uh, activities and uh, contributions on behalf of the university faculty, which is an incredible faculty. Um, I always like to start off by um, indicating who is the team of the faculty centered executive officers who actually work with me in helping uh, the faculty center accomplish its goals. Uh, and those individuals, in addition to myself, include our Senate Vice President, Dr. Sean Anderson, our Senate Secretary, Dr. Mary Ann Hoppe, our uh, Senate Assistant Secretary, Dr. Abola uh, Kamel our Senate Treasurer, Dr. Katrina Martin, and our State Faculty Senate Representative, Dr. Sandra williamson Ash. These are all dedicated and conscientious individuals working on behalf of the Faculty Senate, and uh, I applaud them. I think we have a great team that's doing good things, you know, on behalf of the fa faculty at large. Next slide, please. Hey, uh, I know that this fact, the slide may be a little bit off center, but I will just basically uh, read to you pretty much what, what it has. Hopefully you can actually see it perhaps, but if you don't, uh, I certainly, you know, will proceed to just give you uh, what, what essentially the text is saying. The Faculty Senate has completed an independent study to recommend improvements to NSU's faculty sabbatical program to the NSU administration. This sabbatical program improvements project has been a major uh, project of the faculty Senate uh, over the last, I'd say roughly six months. And so uh, we want the university community to be aware of this. Uh, this uh, has been completed by NSU's faculty sabbatical uh, program task force. And uh, these improvements are being finalized and will be uh, forwarded to the university administration uh, for consideration. Uh, I want to congratulate the uh, chairperson you know, of the Sabbatical Program Improvements Task Force. And uh, uh, she uh, is to be commended for her great work you know, in guiding uh, this team. And her name is uh, Dr. Uh, Kalita Fairfax. And um, Dr. Kalita Fairfax was assisted on this project uh, by a number of other faculty members. They are, include Dr. Cynthia Burwell, Dr. Charles Ford, Dr. John Camaru, Dr. Petrina Martin, and Dr. Uh, Carl McGowan. Uh, I like to thank each of them, you know, for their diligence, you know, in generating this report. We are completing getting feedback from the faculty at large. Uh, if you would like to uh, actually present some feedback, you know, in terms of this particular report that has been circulated, um, please uh, 
uh, feel free to do so. But we will be uh, completing and finalizing this report and forwarding it to the administration for uh, its consideration. Um, next slide. Uh, next slide, please. Great. Another uh, project that we have been involved in in the Faculty Senate involves working specifically with the teaching workload uh, of faculty members. And we have a task force, you know, uh, of the Faculty Senate uh, that is dedicated to uh, looking at and reviewing how we can improve the faculty teaching workload in particular, you know, at uh, NSU. Uh, the Faculty Senate president, Myself has a, a constant dialogue with the provost and the president to facilitate Senate engagement in the ongoing external study relating to the NSU faculty teaching workload. As you heard in the uh, provost presentation, uh, the Abora group, you know, is an outside consultant that is providing information and feedback and recommendations. And uh, I sit on the task force along with several other uh, faculty Senate meeting uh, members, and we have had dialogue, you know, with that group. It looks like we are having some technical difficulties with um, Dr. Atwater's presentation. Are you back, Dr. Atwater? You are on mute. You're still muted. Thank you very much. I was apparently muted, uh, but I'm back. Uh, can you now hear me and see me? Hopefully yeah, so. Okay, let's continue with uh, COVID-19. And again, I'll be finishing this up uh, as quickly as I can, but these are important issues. We've been working, you know, with uh, Dr. Leonard Brown or Vice President for Student Affairs, you know, in COVID-19 uh, safety. Uh, we know that there's still work to be done in terms of ensuring uh, the safety of students and faculty on campus. And so uh, we plan to be engaged in that regard. Uh, Dr. Brown has been to several uh, Senate meetings and we plan to continue uh, the dialogue with him in terms of helping ensure faculty and student safety uh, this spring semester as it relates to uh, the COVID situation. It's not completely behind us. It's great, you know, to see that overall we've overcome, you know, this pandemic. But there's still things that uh, certainly provide uh, risk. And the faculty senate is working on the faculty's behalf and on the on the students' behalf to ensure for a safety environment here at uh, at NSU. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide. If uh, another thing that we've uh, we take pride as faculty center being involved in has been working with you know the uh, university registrar, uh, uh, Mr. Michael Carpenter. You know, in terms of uh, his launching of a student plan initiative that engages students more strategically in course program planning and course registration. Uh, this has been a big issue, I think, uh, for NSU students and NSU faculty. Uh, it has involved uh, engaging student advisors, dedicated student advisors, and assigning dedicated student advisors to departments. And this has been a help, I believe, in balancing the faculty workload. So we've we're happy to have played a part, you know, in terms of working with the registrar on this project. We know that it's still being, uh, uh, how should I say, uh, strongly implemented, you know, and uh, and refined, 
And so uh, we look forward to working with the registrar in terms of uh, continuing to strengthen uh, this very important initiative that we support. Uh, that's all I have uh, to report as far as updates to you. I don't do want uh, the university community to be aware that the Faculty Senate has a meeting that is scheduled for its next meeting on Tuesday, January 17, Tuesday, January 17 at 12.30 p.m. Uh, we invite all full-time faculty uh, members to participate and we uh, get a link out, make available to you so that you uh, can attend our meetings. As you see, we are keeping busy on your behalf. And again, uh, have a happy uh, new year and a productive spring semester. And now I'd like to turn uh, uh, our tensions and our the gavel, so to speak, back to our, our provost uh, and uh, provost uh, Bolton. Uh, uh, I surrender the, <laughs> the gavel to you. Thank you so much, Dr. Atwater, for bringing those updates. And thank you for your leadership of the Faculty Senate. I also want to thank each of the university leaders who brought updates today of their divisional operations. Each of these units comprise the university to make it an excellent and lasting institution. I want to thank Dr. Kathy Thomas for bringing us the mindfulness moment. I feel much better and centered after uh, taking the time to really concentrate on my breathing and um, the way in which I um, engage, right? I guess the area around me. Dr. Thomas, we're gonna have to maybe think about seeing how we can have a mindfulness moment um, and encourage mindfulness moments um, every day throughout the semester. And maybe we'll make that some kind of program that people can log into. Um, I would be remiss if I failed to recognize individuals who began working before the break, through the break, and furiously for the last two days to make this program a reality. That includes Drs. Aurelia Williams, Ebenezer Collagio, Andrea Neal, Ms. Yelena Rishina, Ms. Erica Saunders and Ms. Deborah Ferguson, Deans Tommy Bozier, Glenn, Glenn Carrington, Michael Key, Isaiah Marshall, Khadija Miller, Danielle, Danielle Wallace Alexander, Mr. Marvin Prince, Mr. Don Spencer, and a host of faculty and staff across the university. Spring opening meetings for the Faculty Senate, as Dr. Uh, Atwater mentioned, and for each college, school, and department will be announced from the dedicated leaders of those groups. I want to thank the deans, chairs, and Faculty Senate president for their leadership of their units. Each of these areas are critical to NSU's success. And this ends the morning programming of the opening conference. I encourage you to attend the spring 2023 opening session optional professional development workshops. Um, one being as um, Dr. Hunter mentioned that the um, faculty travel training, which will be held in person next week, Wednesday, January 11th, 2023 from 12 to 1.30 p.m. led by Mr. El Miss Elena Adi. And this training will be located in the Nursing General Education Building, uh, room 215. Um, we have uh, another uh, training session from the NSU Foundation that is scheduled for this afternoon. And it's a session for academic affairs uh, members that will be held from four to five this afternoon, led by Ms. Dominique Jones Mrs. Beverly, and Mrs. Beverly Ferguson. This training is brought to you in virtual format that you can access through the link in today's program. And then the Office of Extended Learning has uh, in-person, hybrid, and online workshops. Um, and they'll offer the Blackboard Tech Trek workshops 
on the go, for which you can learn more in more detail in today's program. Thank you for your time and your commitment to Spartan success. Behold the green and gold.